Okay. Uh, next I do this. I'm going to say, uh, okay, well, the new value of S is this. The new value of D would be this. I'm going to write this as a row vector. Okay, I call this a row vector. I put a bracket here and a bracket here and put the numbers 0 0.9, 0 0.2. They come from the 0 0.9 here and the 0 0.2 here. And then I do this thing called a column vector where I have S and D, the numbers standing for the number of sane and the number of demanded, the symbols standing for those two numbers. And I call that a column vector because I put it in brackets again, but I put them in a column. So I have a row vector times a column vector. And the rule for a row vector times a column vector, well, the new number of S has to come out 0.9S plus 0.2D. So what do you think the rule is for multiplying this row by this column? Okay, I have the first number in the row, the second number in the row. The first number in the column, the second number in the column. So what do I do with the first number in the row? It's the first thing I'm going to do. Stop and think about it. Well, I'm going to multiply the 0.9 by the S because that's what I need. So I'm going to multiply the first number here in the row by the first number in the column. And then I need 0.2D, so I'm going to multiply the second number in the row by the second number in the column. And then what am I going to do with them? Well, I'm going to add them. So the rule for multiplying a row by a column is I multiply the first number in the row by the first number in the column, multiply the second number in the row by the second number in the column. And if the rows are longer and the columns are longer, I multiply the third number in the row by the third number in the column, fourth number in the row by the fourth number in the column, and so forth. Well, whatever I do, when I get done doing those multiplications, then I add the results. That's how I multiply a row by a column. Okay? So here it is. Multiply the first number in the row by the first number in the column, second number in the row by the second number in the column, and this could go on for the third, fourth, fifth, however many numbers you have, as long as the row and the column have the same length. And in other words, uh, you don't want to multiply a row with 12 numbers by a column with 16 numbers. You don't have anything to match up with the last four numbers in that column. That's not going to work. You have to have matching rows and columns. Okay, well anyhow, uh, then we add the two results in this case, and if there are more than two, well, we just add them all. Okay, so what's the rule for the new D? How would I write the rule for the new number of demented. I'm blocking it with my body intentionally so you can pause and think about it. Well, hopefully you did that. Here it is. And hopefully this matches what you got. We're just going to do 0 0.1, 0 0.8 times SD. Why? Because we want to get 0.1S plus 0.8D. We also put uh, the S and the D in the same order that we used up here. Okay, so. Uh, and then we do that for very good reason that you'll see here in a second. So the new D is 0.1 times S, first times first, that's 0.1 times S, uh, plus second times second, 0.8 times D. And that gives us uh, the result that we know we need for the number of demented. Now, the neat thing about this then is that we can combine this and this into one statement. We can say, uh, we can say the column vector that has the new S and the new D is equal to uh, some matrix times SD, and that has to equal 0.9S plus 0.2D, which is the new S. If this is going to be the new S, then it has to be this, and the new D has to be this. So the question is, what numbers do we put into this thing here? Well, we're going to put the two rows in here. We're going to put the first row first so that when we multiply it by SD, we get the first result, the new number of same. And we're going to put the second uh, row, uh, we're going to put the 0 0.1, 0 0.8 in the second row so that when it multiplies the SD, we get 0.1S plus 0.8D, which is the new number of demetic, as it must be. So there's a very good common sense to why we, uh, to, to, to the uh, uh, rules for multiplying these things. Now, there's much, much more we can do with matrices. Matrices being the uh, plural of the word matrix. Um, 
if we want to find the number of sane and demented 20 transitions down the road by this method or even this method we're going to have to figure out how many after one transition how many after two how many after three we're going to have to do them all and that's a little bit silly uh, with a matrix it turns out that we can just raise that matrix to the 20th power because we're applying the matrix every transition if we apply the matrix 20 times it makes sense that we would have the matrix to the 20th power now that requires proof and so forth but it's not an easy con uh, not a difficult concept to understand if we do this to the 20th power and we can uh, calculators will do it computers will do it Excel even will do it even though Excel is a really good math program um, it's it's very easy using machinery to raise a matrix to a power okay um, now to do it by hand it can be a little more complicated and there are strategies we could use to do that and I will ask you to raise matrices to some small powers uh, as we get the rules for multiplying matrices but now next thing we got to do is we got to know what the rule would be for multiplying this by itself so if I wrote down this times the same thing well I recommend that as something you might just try and see if you can come up with something that makes sense okay there are a couple of things you could do and you don't know which one's going to make sense but just uh, in, in terms of what you've seen here uh, it's possible to conjecture how you would multiply a matrix by a matrix